This is Shannon Ray Davis, and you are listening to Omega Man Radio. Welcome to my world, the world of the Omega Man. Join us here for the nightly marathon, broadcasting Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern. You can find us here on YouTube, and we encourage you to report for duty. Get trained up. War of the Saints is coming. You want to be an overcomer and endure till the end. We will teach you how. We cast out devils. We command healing to the sick in Jesus' name. And we preach the full gospel of Jesus Christ to win souls for Jesus. I want to encourage you right now to subscribe right here on YouTube to this channel. Smash the like button and share a link to our live chat room to everyone you know right there on Facebook. Get them to come on out and tune in and join in the fight against the host of hell. If you'd like to support this work financially, we have a PayPal button on our website. We have GoFundMe, Zelly, even Take Bitcoin. And we thank you in advance for partnering with us. Our website is OmegaManRadio.com. One more thing before we start tonight's show. To the demons, tuning in. We're coming for you, demon. No demon is safe. Sir, on the front lines of California Babylon, how are you doing, my brother? Oh man, we're struggling here so far. Laws, regulations, changing things. Health-wise, we're good. Praise the Lord. Spiritually strong, but uh, government side very bad. I was just making the comment. I don't know where people can go that they can escape this, except maybe Florida right now. Florida is looking like the last stand in America where you can go down there and they've got a governor who's willing to fight for its people. I may have missed a state or two, but uh, I know a lot of people got out of California. They went to Texas. Texas wasn't as what they thought it was going to be. Many of them just jumped over to Miami. Um, mm. I've got family right now in the Valley of Decision. i got some that moved to Florida. My daughter did, where her husband took a job down there. and I'm, I'm proud for them. Um, I've got others that are going north. I don't know anymore. Is there any sure place that we can be where we can escape this beast system that is forming? I think it's just going to take over most of the world. What do you think? You know, um, brother, honestly, um, I was just recently learning about uh, Revelation because I never thought that in my uh, season we will have a problem like this. So I'm looking on Revelation and I I called to my friend uh, we were talking about what's going to happen. Where should we go? And then my final answer were, 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 was that this, if they're going to kill us, well, then, then we have to die. That's That was my final answer. Because a lot of people think God will deliver them, which as far as I see on Revelation 13, on the end of the uh, Revelation 13, if somebody dies, let them die. I mean, it's a strong word to say it. But, um, you know, I don't know what to answer. I mean, we can go to Dallas, we can go any other places, but the way I see these governors, they're getting weak too. They're human beings. The yeah. pressure is too high, like Como, like Como. See what they did to him? He was very uh, powerful, now he becomes nobody. Just one phone call, tell him to move from office according to the news, he just left. See how powerful today the evil is. They're removing everyone they want. He was a pretty so, wicked man. I, I think his sins found him out. But you're right. Um, at some point, even those that, like uh, DeSantos, which are doing a great job trying to be a holdout, he may cripple before it's over with, just fold. You know, one time, and then I'll throw the mic to you, I was going to run to Petra. Sure. I searched the scripture, too, about the only place I can find in the Word of God where the beast does not extend his power to is Petra. And I know for those living in Jerusalem, there's coming a time where it says, 
Don't go back to get your cloak. Uh, if you're yeah, in the yeah. field, don't go back home. Make a run up the King's Highway. Get over there to Petra, and God's going to protect many over there. And um, so I saw this stuff coming way back, 2002 and earlier. And I literally, in 2002, I was just thinking about tonight. I said, God, I know what's coming. I don't want to be those that heard the warning and end up going to the concentration camp because I refuse to hear it. But I said, at the same time, if I'm meant for captivity and the captivity I'm going to go, let me know. If that's where you want me to be, then I'm just going to live out the rest of my days and just not worry about it because there's not anything I can do if that's where I'm headed. But on the other hand, if there's a way for me to escape that concentration camp, I'd sure like to. I know Jesus did say if they persecute you in this city, flee to the next. Now, we can run. Uh, he hasn't called us for to pick up the sword and fight back. It says he that lives by the sword must also die by the sword. So here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. going to be forced to choose. Take the mark or lose your head. <laughs> and many are going to fall away and take the mark. Many lukewarm Christians, you don't want to go that route. You're going to hell. Yeah. Some yeah. are going to try to fight the government. They're going to die doing so. Uh, because that would be one of my impulses too, just to fight in the arm of the flesh. And the Lord told me, uh, you got to choose the cross, not the sword. Pick up your cross and follow me. Now, God can preserve people, and some will be alive remaining to see him at the last drop. They're, not everybody's going to be beheaded, but most will. And uh, I was going to make a run for it in 2002 and go to Petra. I didn't even know mm-hmm. where it was, but I knew it was somewhere over there in Jordan area. I had my mm-hmm. passport. I had a little bit of money. And uh, I was thinking about buying a ticket and going over to Petra. (laughs) Now, (laughs) the Lord changed my mind on that, but I actually have a friend, short story. This was back 30 years ago. He did that. He actually moved to Petra. That's about the only place that the enemy doesn't reach. And he got over there, and uh, he was way ahead of time, and it didn't work out for him. He had to come back home. He was lost a bunch of money trying to make that move and and, you know just got frustrated and he fell away and uh, he blamed God you know God didn't tell him to go to Petra Mm -hmm. there's a timing and everything you can go too early or you can go too late and of course that one escape plan is not for everybody I know God's going to protect many of his Jewish people over there but uh, I don't know Uh, I do though think I recall reading something where there are some nations that are going to fight against the Antichrist so yes. not everybody's going to take up with the system. Now, i got to go back and study which nations those are. It may have been Russia. So I They're don't know. saying China. They're saying China will China. be one of them. Yeah. So as an American, we would probably stick out as a sore thumb in China, Russia. I don't know if they'd let us go with it. <laughs> but <laughs> there we are. Folks, welcome aboard. Honored to be here today with Armanac Tokmesian. we got the next hour together. Brother Armanac, you want to open us up in prayer? Sure. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, well, thank you for this season, time, and hours, Master. I'm asking you to bless your people, make them strong and mighty, make them spiritual and holy. Bless their life. And Lord Jesus, protect your people. And let us come home. And let us bless your name. And thank you for your blood. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you. Give us this opportunity to be Christian. And Master, thank you for everything. We praise your name. And we thank you for everything. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, a lot of people think preachers don't have a problem. My wife, she's a nurse. She's working in a hospital. And today she called me and she said... um, we, they give us a two option. Here the option number one: uh, the either you you vaccinated basically or religion. I, and then we just decided we're not gonna tell them anything. We're just gonna walk away because uh, we have problems too, you know. And I'm, I think everybody have problem. Before I start about something interesting, I'm gonna talk about faith because that's what we we need actually right now. I want to remind some somebody something about it's it's a it's not about vaccination honestly I, I don't know what's going on but there's a story in China 19, 1949 when this Chinese guy came and he became a president of China his name was Charman Mo Zidong or whatever he called him before he was coming uh, Chinese Christians 
told their congregation that there is, um, I, I, I heard this from someone, by the way, this is not my story. They told that there is a, a persecution coming to Chinese church. And they were preparing people for that persecution. Now, when this guy died and everything went to normal, a lot of American church pastors and ministers, they went there and asked them, how did you guys survive? And the answer was this, before famine was coming, they prepare us for, I mean, not famine, the persecution coming, they prepare us for that. Now, I think we need to turn and start preparing people for 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 something it's coming we all know this is not normal we all understand there is something behind a lot of preachers says COVID 19 vaccination it's not 666 okay let's say it's not true but here my son today told me because he's in nursing school said that that now they're saying because a lot of COVID vaccinated people are weak they they're asking them to get another shot called boosting shot i mean what's that and um and what i'm trying to say is this uh there's a story in the bible where samson uh was commanded from god not to literally touch three things he will he he cannot touch three things a lot of people said he lost his anointing because the lila cut his hair not only that he actually did two other things that people never talk about it and here the other two things you guys want to know i'll tell you number one when angel came to samson mom the angel says he has to be nazarian so here there's three things he cannot touch he cannot touch dead man he cannot drink alcohol and he cannot cut his hair. Now, when, he, when Samson grew up, he started arguing with Philistines. Here we see that he killed 30 Philistines and he touched their dead body, which he was not supposed to do. Not only that, Philistine general gave him a drink to drink and didn't tell him that that is uh, alcohol or a intoxicated drink and he actually drank that he violated that too but remember my point is he drank that not knowingly but god already told him not to drink it and he eventually we all know it's in our cartoons in our books that delilah caught his hair that's not the point my point here is this that drink he drank not knowingly now all these people here half church says go ahead and take vaccination half church says don't take vaccination and here there's a battle going on my problem is this this what about if it's leading us to 666 and yet we don't know that so that's why i think it's time for us to go to the found foundation of our christian walk faith by faith we walk not by sight but we walk by faith my wife came home she said what we're we supposed to do i said i guess we have to use that words we have to trust the lord and i, I was reading revelation 13:9. i'm not saying i'm a, a, a expert on revelation 39 i don't think there's a people can literally explain the revelation 39 it's literally sometimes you you think there's no way we can understand this but some words are so clear we just can't see i want to read something for you guys this is interesting it says revelation 39 says whoever has ears let them hear now he was talking about some beast came out of ocean some people said ocean is people and the beast come out of ocean the way i understand this is this ocean is the people and the beast is the demand that people want remember there's a scripture that says the way the people is the way the priest is that says that the priest become like people he no longer following god's system he follows people's system i, I think you guys understand what i'm saying so now revelation 13 10 it says if anyone is to go into captivity unto captivity they will go let me read that again if anyone is to go into captivity into captivity they will go here god is not delivering them if anyone is to be killed 
with the sword, with the sword, they will be killed. God is not taking care of them. This calls of uh, this calls for the patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. <laughs> Here, God is not protecting His people. They are being there. I'm not saying we are in that season, guys. Please don't get me wrong. I don't know. I myself don't know. I'm going to start praying and asking God to at least give us some sign. What should we do? Because our fight is not to please Him. Our fight is to please God. I don't care if one pastor says it's good or the other pa pastor says it's not good. I don't care even if it's it's going to damage my body. I don't really care. Uh, the whole my fight is to please God. God because he died for me and I have to die for him. Sorry, but that's my understanding. So then continue saying on verse 11, if you open it with me, then I saw second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. Well, that's, I think we can talk about this a lot, which is, it's, it's fascinating. And then 12, it says, it exercised all authority of the first beast on its behalf. But think about some. Th there was some kind of system. That system, I guess, in my observation, was not uh, literally work, but it was a good system. This second beast, he's using the previous beast, uh, uh, whatever he he established, and made a, and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, who's Fatal wound had been healed. Some, some, I guess, Christians damaged that system. I guess I don't know. I'm just thinking. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of people. Wow, that's that's fascinating. Verse 14 says, because of the signs, it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast. It deceived. The inhabitants of the earth. Well, that's the first thing I see. People be deceived. They don't see the truth. People are deceived. Only majority understand that. I mean, <laughs> in order them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was one wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give bread to the image and then so forth. And then let's go to um, uh, refuse to work. And it says that so that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship in the image to be killed. Ah, here's people, if they're not going to obey that image, they're going to be killed. That's another mystery. When, what image? It also f forced all people, great and small. Look at that. Let me go back. I mean, this is crazy. The second beast was given power to give birth to the image of the first beast. So that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to, the, to, image to be killed. So there will be some kind of image. What was that? I don't know. And then, and then it says this. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark. Guys, pay attention. There's not only one thing. It's three things. Uh, receive the mark of their right hand or on their foreheads. It's a mark. So that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast, or the number of its name. In King's Jim versions, adds two more things, and that no man may be buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here, there's three things King James says. Not it's there is it's not only the number, but actually it's there's other things. Let me read that to you. This is thirteen seventeen, and that no man may buy or sell. It says, save he that had the mark, okay, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And it says the number of his name is 666 and so forth. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is, what about if this is the, if this is the uh, mark? This is something that is going to start leading us in eventually in 666. I don't know. But what I really see, I'm not, I'm just saying what I see. What I see, there is something fishy going on. 
and they're not telling us the truth. In the entire this 7,000 years, we don't see, we only see one time that the church was closed when Noah entered into the ark. And after that, wars after wars, Christians being killed, Christians being killed, Christians being killed, and once the, the Christians being killed, more other Christians was open. In Jesus' time, when Jesus died and resurrected, this these great apostles, these great people, they actually created more churches in around the Asia, in around all the entire world. Even the priest, they said, this guy gonna he almost take entire world. Think of how great persecution was, yet the, the coming to Christ was more and more. But today, people, I understand when Jesus says we were coming to the days of Noah. Now, some people said in Noah's time, people were doing nothing. Who said that? Read that the generation of Seth. These people were righteous people. I study about these people. See, if you read the book of Enoch, book of ushers, it tells about these people. I don't know. I know that book of ushers is totally correct because it mentions that their history was written in the book of ushers. Enoch, you can debate with me because we don't know if that, that was the case or not. But look. These people, these ten generation, uh, they were actually preaching, and some some said that he they were actually casting out demons from some people. This is we're talking about Noah's time. Noah was a preacher. Noah was a preacher. These people, look, what's what, you know what the rabbi says? This is crazy. I gotta tell you this. You know why they said it's Noah's time? Because the word Noah is not a compliment, it's actually insult. The word Noah means rest, but what does it mean symbolically to us? People in Noah's time, they were careless rest, rest people. They were careless. Because look, look what happened. God came to Noah and he says, build yourself an ark. Some said he was so panicking when God revealed him what's happening in the world. He said, oh, um, what, what should I do? What should I do? Come on, God. I, that's not fair. I don't do none of that. And God says, all right, all right. Make yourself an ark. And we see in Noah's time, this is the crazy. This guy built the ark. And nobody came to Noah. And I don't even believe his family were righteous too. I think God saved his family because of Noah. I mean, his son, the, his younger son was evil. The canon, he did something crazy. And uh, God, actually, uh, I mean, Ham did something crazy and gave Noah cursed canon. I mean, we look, you look at it, the, the, the days of Noah, careless Christians. You guys have no idea how powerful we are. There was a story in act when Herod the king, that evil guy, the descendant of Esau, when he saw killing Christians, pleasing others, he arrested Peter too. He killed James with a sword. He arrested Peter. Here Peter, that poor guy, was in the jail with 60 guards. 60, not two, 60, he's in chain. What is he going to do with the 60 guards? They want to make sure they kill him. Now, let me tell you something. When the church came to a point and they said to their minds, brother, if we don't come together, we're going to one by one be slaughtered by enemy. And here the scripture says in Acts, they pray until they saw God face to face. When they had that, God sent the angel and delivered Peter from jail. Even Peter didn't know that he was actually coming out of the jail. Think about it. We have to come together. Remember when Peter came? And the church start complaining to God what the authorities are doing. And it says the place shaked. Praise God. We need to start complaining, but get into our knees as a one church and cry out to the Lord and say, this must 
be stopped. And I believe God will stop that. We have to use this great book called a Bible. Instead of reading some people's junk, trying to understand how to get delivered, let's get into our knees. There is a book only been written by Holy Spirit, and I believe it's the greatest book. A lot of people, they are promoting their books, stealing God's word, promoting their books. I'm sorry, but I'm sick and tired. They are making millions of dollars, but nobody promoted. You know, I went to churches, there was no Bible in cell. It was all their books and their faces on their books. No Bible was there to be sold. Buy my book. Buy my material. That's, that, that's why we're here. This is what's happening to us. We, we have to read the Bible. Not some, 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 some dude book. He write, write a book. And he's, he's stealing a God's word. Putting on that book and selling to people. We got to go back to the Bible. Bible have everything we need to know about Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit and the Father. We have to start going back to the Bible. And if you go to the Bible, it says that there was a story that trying to destroy Christians. This is what they're trying to do right now. They're trying to destroy Christians, yet the, this church came together, pray to God until they see face to face, Almighty God, and God deliver Peter. Think about it if they killed Peter. A great apostle. He was stoned. You cannot kill that guy. God created him. God made him a, a, an important figure. Yet one he lost. He lost one person. These people are giants. These people, in their life in their 50s, 60s, they created, they make the world to be Christian. Careless people, guys. Careless Christians. What the Christian really wants? Money, 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 money. Money hungry people. What the church preaching? Give your money, money. Go work and give it to me. More job, you're a Christian. A guy was a, a guy was a homeless, right? I help him. He was a homeless, sleeping in one single bed, two people sleeping in that single bed. I went, I took this guy from that place. I help him to be Christian. I give my car. I give my food. I give my money. I be, make him his, my disciples. One day he become rich, richer than me. You know what he told me? He said, you see, pastor, God is not with you. I said, really? How did you know that? How did you figure out that God is not with me? Who told you that? He said, see, I have more money than, than you. If God loves you, he'll give you money. Look how he's thinking. I said, brother, you are stupid. It's the blessing of God. It's not in the money. The patriarch and matriarch, we study the Bible. These people had famine. These people been persecuted. They died for God. These people had no money. They were sitting in with a this poor Paul had no money telling other disciples, bring my stuff so I can wear it. It's cold here. You're telling me that the money represents God's blessing? Is that how you think? No. We need to go back and 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 start focusing. Listen, people. I don't know what this guy doing, what the government is doing, the whole world. Look, 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 uh, uh, European countries, Austria, Germany, UK, French, uh, uh, Italy, and other the part of the world. Brother, they are eating each other, fighting, killing each other. Not only that, the, uh, uh, Afghanistan, is the America pulled his army from Afghanistan. Can I tell you something that I heard years, years ago? They were telling that, that the European country and Asia, they want to kick out America from that part of the world so they can do anything they want. They finally, finally, it's coming to pass. Now, Afghanistan, that poor people, they are training these people, making their muscles strong so they can attack who? Israel. I mean, Lebanon is attacking two Jewish people. Syria is attacking. Now, Turkey is threatening. Iran is threatening. Kuwait was, uh, not Kuwait, the, the Iraq. I mean, all these people are threatening. Uh, uh, Erdogan has 13 Muslim Brotherhood countries. He put them together. What they want to do? 
they want to destroy God. Let me put it that way. Really? Yeah. If they kill Israel, destroy Israel, they will prove the world that there is no Jehovah, neither Jesus. All this is fanatics. But you know what's going to happen to them. God is on the throne. We got to go back into our knee. And that's why I've decided to teach you about faith. And, and, and if you study in Hebrew 13, it talks about faith. Um, and I want to read this for you because I think it's very important. This is where I'm, I'm going to open up my uh, a scripture. And I really want you to understand something. All this year, I pray, I ask the Lord His will. And I was asking the Lord if He wants to bless me and, and, and all that. But we go to Hebrew 11, I'm sorry. And we're going to read Hebrew 11, 1. But I want to say something before I, 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 I read the Hebrew. You know, I study scripture a lot and, I, and I'm not lying people. And the scripture says something in um, Joshua 1, 9. Let's go that very quick. I want to say something there that the Lord is reminding me. There is a command in Joshua 1, 9. When God chose Joshua, God says something incredible. Have I not commanded you? Listen to me, people. Living in faith, it's not an option. It's not something you decided to do. It's actually a command from the Lord, and I'll show it to you. One second. Watch what it says. Joshua 1.9. This man was a warrior. He was a slave. His name been changed. A powerful man. Let me give you some background about Joshua you need to know. People think Joshua was nobody. <laughs> Joshua was, I think, was the most smartest man I know. Let me tell you what he did. He was a slave. He came out of... Egypt and he started coming closer to Moses when Moses went up in the mountains Moses was there for 40 days he did not eat a food guess what Moses was coming down guess who he met Joshua was halfway that's why a lot of commentary said that 40 days no water and no drink when Moses was over there spiritually God was protecting this man listen to me people listen to me very good Moses was up in the mountain 9,000 feet mountain that's what they're saying I never been there I just studied it it was a 9,000 feet mountain he was up there what the Lord cloud covered this man God's presence protected this man body but here Joshua Without that, he was halfway hungry, thirsty, stayed faithful to this man of God. Unbelievable. Did not Bible did not mention what he was doing there, but I believe strongly that this guy was 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 exercising, uh, making his spiritual life stronger. Here Moses was covered with God's glory, but yet Joshua was down there without God's glory. How do I know that? When Moses knew up there what's happening to, 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 to Jewish people, but yet Joshua did not know. When they came down, Joshua says, it's some kind of party going on, and Moses says no. But he exercised. When we pastors telling people, pray fast, pray fast, come to church, don't be lazy, we, you use words, don't be backslider. you know what they say, hey, you know, we got to go to church, we got to go to work, sorry pastor, you need to understand, yeah, right, that's what we have, that's why our Christians, our brothers and sisters today are weak, 
They have no faith. Yet they're calling the same people, calling us and demanding an answer. Should we get vaccinated or not? And you don't know what to tell them. Because the scripture says in Revelation 13, those who have wisdom, let them understand. Do we have to have a wisdom? Where the wisdom come from? It says, those who are in faith, let them ask a wisdom. God will give it to you. Let them, let them never ask for a wisdom. Joshua. God changed his name to Yahshua, a, a, a name of Jesus pretty much close. His name was not Yahshua. He changed his name to Yahshua. First time he, he, he was carrying the same beautiful name that Jesus had. Once Moses died, this man became a leader. A good exercise. He was mighty in spiritual and in physical. But here God came and he says, listen to me, boy. I command you to listen what it says. Joshua 1 9 says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. God commanding this man who has full skill to fight and to stay strong. Yet says, I command you don't ever move. If you die, die. If you go to fight fight here that's what the powerful is. faith is not an option it's a command that you need to know that's the first thing i want to show you this says the this is in joshua 1 9 i remember i tell you the truth god is my witness man years ago when the president was somebody else, I'm not going to name his name. I don't want to ruin this station. But when the president is, was somebody, it was so bad too. Not this, not in this way, but back in there was bad too. I told my kids, I said, if they come and arrest us, don't you ever come against God or complain to God. I choose, listen to me people, I'm not lying. I choose to follow Jesus. Nobody forced me, and I will go all the way to end. I choose, because in John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world. Let's look at it. It's beautiful. This is when he finished talking to Nicodemus. Beautiful. He actually was telling something incredible. How to born, because remember Nicodemus was telling him, how do you do all this? And he, in John 3, he, he was talking to Nicodemus. So he got Jesus, start telling Nicodemus beautiful things. And then he finished it with beautiful conversation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. My question is this. The Jew came to Christ by force or it was a personal will? Of course it's a personal will. I decided to serve God, to be in public. My face, I show a lot of pastors, they don't have cameras. They don't want to be in public. They're hiding for, for, for the same reason. I know a lot of preachers, they're not in camera. And here it says, for, for God so loved the world. That he give his only and only son. His one and only son. That whoever. Personal choice. If you decided to be Christian. Then walk. Live. Because the Joshua 1.9 clearly says. It's a command. And the command is. To have. And to live. The great faith that God gave it to us. And I practice it all. Because the scripture actually teaches, maybe there is more, I don't know. But actually teaches there is four faith that, that the scripture teaches. Four faith. I, I, the, I found it four. And let me, let me give you four. And then... We'll, we'll talk about it a little more. But here we have the gift of faith. We need it. I'll explain a little more. We need a fruit of faith, a measure of faith, 
And there's another one in Tyrus says common faith, my common faith. Faith. What that means, I call a ministry faith where all the pastors and all the ministers, whatever they do, they need to be in one page. We cannot divide the church. We cannot divide God's word. Maybe we don't agree with few things, but remember when Paul came to Jerusalem, because he needs to come, he was still keep telling Gentiles do not be circumcised, and then yet these Jewish people will have a problem. And I don't have a problem with them. You know why? Because that's what they learn, guys. Come on. For 16, 1,600 years, these people have been bombarded to circumcise. It was a big deal. Moses didn't want to circumcise, and God came on the way to kill Moses. Remember that story? And now here, the Paul Apostle out of nowhere comes and says, do not be circumcised. Jesus already did mistake for them. Jesus was healing people in Sabbath. It was a big mistake for, for, for Pharisees. They said, why don't you do a different day? Why are you doing in Sabbath day? Can you please not do do? Don't do that. And Jesus says, no. For them, Jesus is already doing a lot of mistakes. He healed a guy. He healed a guy sitting over there for 40 years. He healed this guy and yet they come out. They said, you can walk healed. Stupid. Because that's what they learned for 1,600, 1,600 years. And now, here, when they came to Jerusalem, they demanded, Paul says, Paul, come on, man. We, we got we to gotta have some, some agreement. This is stupid. You're telling all not to circumcise. What are you doing? Are you killing Moses' law? One, the only one law? Yes, yes, we understand, Jesus died, what they said. We understand. We see the miracles you do. Beautiful, Paul, but come on, don't say it. Don't mention. Let them circumcise. In Acts 15. Acts 15. They came together. This is in Acts 15. They came together. And hear what it says. It says that when they sit down, when they sit down, one of the guys, which uh, James, stand up says, brother, can I tell you something? And they were arguing, by the way. I mean, I mean picture it. I'm not going to read the whole, whole story here. This is Acts 15. They were arguing. Because look what it says. Then the apostles and the elders with the whole church decided to select a man from among them to send Antioch with the Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas called Barnabas and Salas, two leaders among the brothers, and sent them with, the, with this letter. Apostle and apostles and elders, your brothers, the the brothers among the Gentiles, Antioch, Syria, and Cleo. You know why Antioch mentions a lot? Because Antioch was like America, used to be like America. The governor over there, a nice guy. You, as long as you pay the tax, they don't touch you. They don't care you're Jew or Gentile or who cares. The guy, according, right now Antioch is just junk. But Antioch was, was a refugee for Jew people. It was a great place, good business. It was, I call America. It has come to our attention that some went out from us without author authorization, and and they, they just and then troubling and then you know if you read and then it says do not touch the blood, do not touch the idols. It says it seems good to Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond this essential requirement. You must abstain from food sacrifice to add idols uh, from the blood, from the meat of uh, st uh, uh, strangled animals and uh, for sexual immorality. So here this letter being created and Holy Spirit was agree with them. It's, it's, fan fa it's fascinating. Read from 22 pastors. They came together I mean, they were arguing. Brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth. We, a church, come of faith. I was just explaining the first part. 
we, we, the, the leaders need to have one faith. That's why instead of one says this, they should come together and have some kind of agreement. Let people be free. Some people want to be, some people want to vaccinate because they need to take care of their family, but they don't want to do that because they love God. And some pastor says, yeah, do it. Said, you know, this guy, he, he opened his church in, in, in those crypt- cr- uh, um, crazy time and all the Christians were, were, were saying, that's stupid why he did that. I forgot his name. I think he's Pastor Randy and uh, I forgot his other name. He opened the church in uh, right in the middle of pandemic. He doesn't want to close the church and the, look who who, who actually uh, uh, blaspheme Christians common faith that's the first faith we need to learn that now let's go to the second one the second one is what I call measure of faith I really want to concentrate on that one let me give you well, let me give you um, uh, two other faiths the gift of faith it recorded in Acts uh, it, recorded, it, it recorded in Corinthians 12 it says the gift of faith remember there's a gift of faith that's something that church needs that's something that I, I want I don't want to touch that because that's too much teaching but my my whole thing is there's there's two which I really want to talk about a measure of faith and fruit of faith a measure of faith is something that we need to exercise our life we need to um, always pray and fast in my zoom I demand people to fast and pray. This month, we're starting to fast once a week. Because, you know, I do that because get, it's getting cold. I mean, I'm sorry, next month we're going to... I already fast anyway, but I told, I'm going to start telling people to fast. We have to fast too. It, 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 it gives a nutrition to your faith. It allows your faith to grow. A lot of people, when they fast... They told me personally that it helps into their into their uh, uh, um, system, into their faith. So the scripture teach us that we need to have a measure of faith, and measure of faith literally starts when you work on your Christian walk. You need to pray, learn how to pray. A lot of people said, "I pray." And when I see the results, there is no results. Why? Because you need to learn how to pray. And that's something that we we actually need to understand. And in learning to pray, you need to participate to church. People don't want to go to church anymore. I don't understand. You never read uh, a Hebrew 10? You know this crazy guy? I don't know his name. He was actually on international TV in his own church. He's saying that all these pastors who said that you need to go to church, they are crazy. Yet on the end of his program, he said, but if you don't have place to go, you're welcome to come to my church. How stupid is that? You just, you're just telling everyone on the program, you're saying people come to church? What is that? So, Measure of faith is where you involved and involve actively. Like you want to b- build some muscles into your body. You can't just do one day and leave it alone and then come back in three months and you try to build it again. The muscle die. When you, I mean, I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger and other dude when they were working out they had crazy body structure but one day i showed them when they were old it was like they've never been bodybuilders because muscle dies my memory stays if you work on it it'll come back but the, but the structure dies i am telling you if you involved actively into bodybuilding into running into swimming you will become someone but that's what the measure of faith is doing. This is where you grow spiritually. This is where you involved God's business. This is now it's easy for you to to give tie. It's easy for you. People said tie is a business. Uh, you know that's what all the people said. You're going to church. Why should I go to church? I already believe Jesus. That's what they're saying. Why should I read? One lady came to me and she said, you know, pastor, can I tell you something? I said, yeah, go ahead. She said, I already read the Bible. Why do you keep telling us to read the Bible again? I already read it from A to Z. I said, lady, when I get sick, 
I want to find out how can I be cured. She said, really? I said, yeah, that's how I get, uh, uh, I get my healings. One of the things that I learned, it says, forgive your brother. One of the things that I learned in Galatians, it says, the way you treat others, be careful. Otherwise, you will be tempted the same way. People don't know that. But how are you going to know? If you read more and more and more, study more and more, and there's a secret, there's the code that you find it. And it helps you to grow. Love your enemy. Love my enemy. <laughs> how, how do I do that? That's impossible. It's possible if you... We, if you uh, exercise your faith. Uh, people come to me. I have a gym in my house right here. I build it because I used to be a bodybuilder. Uh, people come to me. I, I, I stopped working out because I was busy in the ministry. And then my muscles hurts. So I know my muscles need food. So I, me and my friend, we together went, came here. And he was actually doing heavier than me. And I told him, he said, I said, brother, just give me two months. I'm going to do three, four times more than you. He said, that's impossible. Guys, I only was doing the bar. You know, bar is 45 pound. And then I was almost 350 pound in a few months. I'll start doing bench press, almost. He came to me and said, how did you do that? I said, the memory is there. All I need is to exercise. You got the faith. All you need is to exercise. Make it powerful. Make it strong. Anything comes in you, you can lift it up. So it's so important to be and exercise your faith in God. It's very important to do that. You have the faith. All you need to do is exercise. I done it as a bodybuilder. Look what happened. I gained power. I hope you guys understand what I mean. Now. I'm almost done, guys. I want to go to the second part. Uh, this is fascinating. This is what I like. Jesus, I give you praise and honor. Now, the fruits of faith. The fruit comes from the tree, right? You guys know. Let's talk about tree. Let's talk about that fruit. Every tree, almost tree to eat, they have fruits. But look. Look, look what the scripture says. Oh, this is so good. This is in John. I want to show you something powerful. This is in John 15. I want to show you something. It's so powerful. It says, I am the true vine. And my father is a gardener. This is New International Version. He says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear a fruit, he burns so that it will be even more fruits. Listen to me, people. The fruit of faith represents Jesus completely. Because the vine is the resource, but the branch is the fruit comes. Jesus says, the second faith, which I call measure of faith. This is powerful. It's the result of the measure of faith. You have a measure of faith. The next faith is the fruit of faith. What that fruit of faith do? It represents what kind of tree you present and what kind of fruit you present that's what jesus said once the branch you know i tell you the truth a branch i saw people put a, a branch they cut the tree and they put the branch into that tree and they waited until until branch releases his uh, uh, roots into that vein vine it says i'm the vine once the vine received the roots and then the, once the vine received the branch and then fruits comes out of the branch. You guys understand? Here the branch cut it from somewhere, and they want to stick with the with with the, um, with with a, a, a vine, the, the big thing. And then you you cut it, and then you you put it together, and then you wait, and then you see it like it mingles together, and the fruit comes out of the branch. But when the branch doesn't wanna release his roots into the vine, 
then it says I have to cut him out because he doesn't want to be friendly with me. But how do you do that? The first is the measure of faith. And I want to finalize saying that I think we're living probably a last days. And Satan and the last days, if you read Revelation, it says some of you are going to walk away from the Lord. Some of them, even he says, elect ones going to walk away from God. He said, when I come to the earth, will I find faith? They're all going to believe Jesus. Don't get me wrong, but none of them can have a structure. And that's why when something comes into their way, they will unable to lift it up. They're going to be unable to take care of it. It's going to be too heavy for them. So they're going to just say, we are going to follow a man who's stronger than us. That will be the Antichrist. I'm saying to you people is this. Man, I feel the presence of the Lord. I'm saying let's go back to our knees. Let's fill the churches again. Let's forget all the emotions. Let's forget all that. Let's go back to church. I don't know how many people are listening to me. But we got to go back. We got to go back and support God's work. He died for us. He established people. He wants you to support that. Make it one people. Pray until God delivers us. But who's praying today? My church is almost empty. People churches are empty. They don't want to go anymore because they think churches can pastor don't believe vaccination people don't go to churches because they think pastor will make them sick one pastor actually tell that says nobody comes to my church because they think i'm fanatic look how congregation thinks well they believe jesus but they don't have a structure that's what i'm trying to say. let's go back and let's live in faith this is what God gave it to us. Without faith, we cannot please God. That's all I'm trying to say. How to build our faith? We just need to go back to the Word, go back to the church, go back to God. Pray fasting, living holy life, a basic foundation. Go back to your previous love, it says Revelation. He's knocking the doors today. He's knocking every door today. Yet where is Jesus again? He's outside. Churches, they throw him out. He's knocking. Open the door. And saying that, I'm done for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Powerful word today. Brother Armanac, it was awesome. Praise Jesus. How Praise can a Jesus. person contact you, my brother, and how can they support your ministry? My brothers and sisters, um, we have events this Sunday and next Saturday and Sunday. John is with us. We're going to have great, another great deliverance. And um, um, if you guys want to contact with us, go to Armen, A-R-M-E-N, ministry. And then we have all the events, and there's a donation box. Like I said, our rent, they increase it 100%. We need help for that too. And also help uh, uh, my finances because my wife, I guess she's going to quit because of that. We don't know what, what's going to happen. I don't think they're going to say yes to that. So if you guys want to bless and help me too, God bless you. So uh, phone number 888-413-4443. And um, we're going to believe that God going to supply, and that's what it is. And thank you for listening. If my words are a little bit stronger, I apologize, but it is what it is. My Brother, kids always say that. God bless you. Thank you for listening. We speak the truth. Let the chips fall where they may. That was a powerful right now word. I totally agree. We'll see thank you next you, time. We love you, brother. Yes, Thanks sir. For coming on. Love you, too. God bless you. Friends, we're going next to uh, Dr. Jonathan Hansen standing by. Let me say this will be right back. <laughs> 